And welcome everybody, it's Dan. I hope you're well today. Welcome to Mindset and Hustle Show. I want to talk today about mindset, really about having better control of your mindset, because obviously right now, uh, life's pretty hard, isn't it? I mean, it's, it seems to have been hard since since the pandemic. And I know it's it's not just me and our clients. Everybody seems to be kind of struggling with this right now. And so we've not done a Mindset and Hustle show for quite some time. So I figured we should probably just go and give some advice that we can share with you guys, that we've shared with some of our um, coaching clients, um, because they get results from this advice that I'm about to give you. So uh, it makes sense uh, to pass some of this advice on in the hope that we can actually help a few more people as well. Okay, so how to have a better control of your mindset. Number one, then, obviously, is to build resilience. And then, so, you know, obviously, these are just here on the left, uh, on the right hand side as you're watching this. My left, you're right. Uh, <laughs> these are just headlines, but underneath the headline is the important bit of information. So just build resilience. Brilliant. That's it. Well, how do you do that? That's the point, right? So I got back from CrossFit this morning uh, and my wife's parents uh, are staying with us for the last couple of days. And they're like, do you have a good workout? I'm like, yeah, yeah. It was really difficult, really challenging. But through the really difficult and really challenging things that we do away from business, away from work, that's where you're able to build resilience, resilience that then feeds into your normal everyday life, your relationships, the work that you do and so on. And so... I have this kind of argument that instead of making life really hard and instead of making business really hard, how about you take you, you take failures and you take challenges and you move those away from work? And actually, all you should really be having in work is more and more success. But the failures and challenges are really important. So what you want to do is you want to put those over to one side and you want to build something around failures and challenges that you can then overcome because that's what's going to build resilience. So for me, it, for the last two years, in fact, it's been um, two years, one month. Um, I started CrossFit uh, back in April uh, 2022. And that's been utterly life changing in many, many ways, not only physically and a confidence for my physical body and my ability to do more things with my body that I couldn't do before. Handstand pull ups, rope climbs, um, Olympic lifting like, you know, this morning we did clean and jerks, for example, heavy clean and jerks. And, and that was brilliant. But the mindset angle that that has given me has been totally worth it. If I got zero physical results from that um, doing CrossFit, I would still do it just to get the mental well-being results because they are phenomenal. Uh, today we had to do devil presses, which is two um, dumbbells into a push-up and then into a, a, um, a um, like a clean, a snatch, if you like, um, with the dumbbells. You know, challenging stuff. That was after the workout. That was one of the bonuses. And it's challenging stuff. But this is the point is that it's supposed to be challenging. Put your challenges away from work. I had a client years and years ago and um, he was talking about how difficult business was and how hard he was finding it. And what he was doing was because we are obstacle overcoming machines, right? And we're meaning making machines at the same time. So what he was doing was he was wanting to have challenges in his life like we all do. I don't, know if, I don't know if you know this, but when you're going through your life, you want challenges to overcome because we are challenge or obstacle overcoming machines. And if you've not got obstacles to overcome, you're going to actually put them in unconsciously. You're going to put them into your work. And I said to this guy, I said, look, why don't you just go climb at the time where he liked hiking and walking, that kind of thing. And I said, why don't you go climb the three peaks? Put all your problems and all you're whinging and you're moaning about how your legs hurt and, and, you know, the fact that you've not eaten enough food today and the fact that you're so tired from all this physical exercise. Make that your obstacle that you're having to overcome. Now you're going to moan about that. Make your business the easy stuff. Like overcome uh, everything away from business and your business then should be about building successes, not about having to overcome problems all the time. Because unconsciously, we put problems into our life because we want to find problems that we can overcome. Who? What is man uh, and woman? Uh, but I use the word man interchangeably, right? It's not a sexist thing. But what is, you know, uh, I can quote um, Shakespeare, what a piece of work is, is man, right? What is man other than an obstacle overcoming machine? Like we, we were put on the planet to overcome problems. That's who we are. It's what defines us. 
uh, you know, what have you done? Well, I'm a single mum. That's that's the obstacle that you're overcoming. What do you do? Um, uh, well, my background was really hard. I had no money. Well, that, okay, that's the obstacle that you've overcome. What do you want to do? Well, I want to be a sales manager. Okay, what? that's the obstacle that you're having to overcome in order to get yourself there. We are obstacle building machines. If you've not got obstacles, obvious ones, you're going to create them in, in your business and that's what's going to stop you from growing. To get those obstacles, move them over to one side. Go do a triathlon. Go do CrossFit. Join a five-side football team. If you're just turning 50 or you're over 50, you need to go lose some weight because you're going to die soon. If you're really overweight, like, like I've had conversations with people. I'm 51. I've had conversations about cancer and about people dying and diabetes too uh, and pre-diabetes. And I'm like, dude, what the hell? Like, 51 is no age. And I've had conversations with a friend about other people our age going through some of this stuff. It's crazy. Get all your obstacles. Like, diabetes, too, by the way, is is a ridiculous disease to be ill from. That's a lifestyle choice. Stop eating bloody pizzas and sweets and donuts. Get to the gym. Get on a diet. Lose some weight. And, and th- put your obstacles into that. Oh, well, you don't understand. It's so hard. It's so difficult. I know. That's the point. That's the point. You're going to build resilience through the challenges that you're about to overcome. That right there, my friends, is the point. But we don't do that. We go through life and we meander through and these problems pop up. No, 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 no. Move all your problems to one side. Put them in something that you've got to overcome. That's where the majority of your problems are going to um, pop up. And then you're going to have the ability and capability to overcome those. And then that is what's going to build resilience. And I know it's it's kind of a roundabout way. Well, you know, Dan, if I was just richer, that would solve all my problems. That's not how it works. You've got to build resilience in other places. That's how you get rich. It's just not how it works. Um, conversely to that then, as well as building obstacles and failure into your life, but away from work, you've also got to build in some wins because winning is a habit. And uh, I was watching, I am watching the NBA um, playoffs right now. And uh, New York, who uh, I think played yesterday, and I've not seen the game yet, so don't tell me. Uh, but New York, um, you know, they they um, they do very well. They, they're building a habit of um, winning. And, and New York Knicks, by the way, for the last 20 years, haven't won shit, right? So for having to build this. And also... Um, is it, uh, it's not Dallas Mavericks, who's got Nikola Jok- Jokic um, in it? Anyway, whatever whatever team it is, uh, Nuggets, Denver Nuggets, McNuggets as I call them. It, they are winning, right? Because they've got this habit of winning and winning is a habit. And so let's just assume for one second that that's accurate. So how about we get some small wins? Like I got some wins this morning at CrossFit. I've had a bad back since um, November because I've got um, a lumbar issue, which is basically an old war wound from uh, playing basketball for 30 odd years, 35 years. And, uh, you know, it affects me, right? But this morning I got some wins in. We're doing some clean and jerks. And I lifted quite heavy and got through the um, session. That, in my mind is overcoming some obstacles and getting wins into my day. You want to build wins into your everyday occurrence. Whatever it is, like, what have you won at today? It might be, uh, you know, it's only 10 o'clock in the morning in the UK and, and you might not have had a win as yet. But if you've not had a win as yet, what win are you going to program into your day today so that you can go, okay, I've had all these problems, but look, I've got this win. Because winning is a habit. And let's just assume that that's correct. So what can you do on a daily basis that's going to build in wins? So for me, CrossFit works really well. And then in addition to that, I run on a Tuesday night and I do an extra session on a Thursday. The running on a Tuesday night has increased my um, speed and um, endurance so that when I go to CrossFit, I can actually do more, I can lift more and I can last longer than before when I was completely tired because my cardio wasn't as good. That right there is a weekly win that then translates into a daily win. The running on a Tuesday night, two or three, uh, usually it's about two and a half kilometres, and we might go 5K next week. Uh, But running on a Tuesday night, 
that's the weekly win and then that translates into a daily win because the results of me doing that winning and and building my cardio engine then translate very well into the day-to-day crossfit aspect and so you've got to get some wins in so the question is what wins can you get in today so for example another, another really good example is i really couldn't be bothered live streaming today but i'm looking at my calendar and my calendar is looking a little bit empty for um the video shorts that we do we've got um we've got 6 p.m uh all lined up which is 5 p.m uk time but we've got nothing at like nine o'clock 8 a.m for the live stream shorts and i'm like oh my gosh i can't be bothered so, okay, so spend a bit of time. Let's create a mindset and hustle show. Let's um, do the mindset one. Let's come up with four topics and then let's go live. And here we are. So now after this, this for me is a win. I can't be bothered doing it. I couldn't anyway. Not when I, when I thought, oh, let's go live. I just couldn't be bothered doing it. And now that we're here and we're doing it, I'm going to be like, yeah, brilliant. Now we've got a win. And now off this one video, we'll pull out another 10 or 15 videos that we can then schedule for the next two weeks. That's another win. So you need to get yourself a list of wins. Like to some extent, it could be what are, you, what are your daily things that you have to do? So one of the things that's on my daily, absolute daily to do list, coffee, shower, Without shadow of a doubt, those two things have to happen. The third thing that has to happen is I go to CrossFit. Because if I don't do that, that's a win for me every single day. And by the way, I usually go at eight or nine o'clock in the morning. So when I do that, I've got my first win of the day by nine o'clock or 10 o'clock and I'm finished and I'm back home ready for shower number two. That's a win that I put into my day every single day so that no matter how bad today gets, right, it might get really bad. Who knows? Okay, hopefully it won't. But if it does, I've still got this win. This win is a habit and I'm building the habit over a period of time. And eventually you get uh, more wins and eventually you get bigger wins and you've got to build that up over time. But it has to be part of your... Uh, planning, which very nicely leads me on to you planning better. So you having greater control of your mindset comes from you being better organized and you planning better. So when I go look at my calendar, for example, like this weekend, I'm flying to the UK on Friday. I've got a two day training um, course to do of the weekend. Monday, uh, I'm seeing like six or seven different trades for a house that we've got empty that needs a full refurb and then uh, in the afternoon uh, finishing another house that we a flat that we just refurbed because uh, it's got some finishing touches that needs doing and then on uh, Tuesday I think it is I'm off to London because I've got a two-hour tax thing that I really don't want to go to but I have to go to and then I fly back on on Wednesday so all of that weekend has to be planned We've got allocated times for all those trades to come. I know what I'm doing. I've got uh, lunch with my parents and my daughter and my granddaughter. Um, uh, in case you're wondering, it's uh, corned beef hash and jam roly poly with custard. It's even, it's all planned. Everything is planned, right? Now imagine not having any of that planned. I have to plan all the flights. I have to plan trains. I've bought the train tickets already because I know where I'm supposed to be on what day, what time, what I'm supposed to be doing. If I didn't have that and I go, okay, um, I've got, got this two-day training. I'll book a, a hotel when I get there and um, i got trades. So I'll, I'll get there um, on the Monday and I'll phone them up and see who's available. Well, no one's available on the Monday, so nothing's going to happen. It's a complete waste of time. But because I've already pre-planned it and I go and look at my calendar and I can see the times that everything's booked in for, I can see the flight times, I can see the train times, everything is planned in and everything is booked in. There is no surprises. Or certainly there might be surprises, but I've cut down on the number of surprises. So instead of it being everything is a complete and utter surprise, don't know what's going on or what what planet I'm on or where I'm supposed to be or who I'm supposed to be seeing. Now everybody knows what they're supposed to be and where they're supposed to be at what time and on what date because they're seeing me. I've organized all that. And so my mindset is I can look at my calendar and go, okay, I've got this, I've got this, I've got this. Fine, 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 fine. It's fine. There are no problems. Stuff might pop up. Of course stuff pops up. You know, just because you plan things doesn't mean shit doesn't hit the fan from time to time. Because, of course, that's what's going to happen. It's life. Right on the edge, you know, on the edge of a cliff is right where life happens. But you've got to affect life, 
life not affecting you. And you've got to get greater control over your time, over your goals, over your results, because these are your stuff, not anybody else's. So uh, my daughter's uh, wanting to go to college and um, I'm like, did you phone them up? Oh, well, I phoned them and left a message, but they didn't call me back. Right. Well, who's who's responsible for that? The college? No. Do they care if you get into college or not? No. Who cares? She does. I do. Right. So who's responsible for that? Well, she is. It's nobody else's fault. She doesn't get into college because college doesn't phone her back. It's nobody else's fault but hers. And I don't like the word fault and I don't like the word blame, but it's nobody else's responsibility. It's nobody else's responsibility other than mine to ensure that all these tradespeople are going to show up. So at the time that we're supposed to show up. So I'm going to message them, just confirming you're right for that day. Please be on time because we've got lots on. Right. That's what you do. I'm planning better, which automatically means anxiety levels are lower. Uh, surprises are going to be lower. That's not to say anxiety might not pop up and stress might not pop up and shit hitting a fan might not pop up. Of course, that stuff is going to is going to tie in, right? But you planning better means you're going to have a greater control of that. And then just finally on this, in terms of managing your um, mindset better, is to get more downtime. And what I mean by that is, look, it's really easy to be work, 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 work. It's really, really easy. You throw yourself into it and you're really busy and you've not planned either, by the way. And you, so you're just really busy. You're at the call face with your pickaxe and you're hitting the call and you're doing that 12 hour days, right? Seven days a week. And it's like, you know, the, the invention for the coal drilling machine, the guy stood outside the coal pit, and you know, for metaphor here, I'm not really digging coal, right? The guy stood outside with his machine, but I don't know, I don't have time to look at that machine. No, 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 I'm so busy digging for coal, right? Sometimes you've got to go, okay, let's just take a breather. Get on a plane, go on holiday, go to the gym, go for a walk in the park, go do whatever it is that you need to go do that's going to get you some downtime. That's the important bit, because while you're then doing the downtime, you have all these things that are going to bubble up from your unconsciousness, from your unconscious mind, stuff you would not even thought about, going for a walk. One of the big things that I do every single day, we've got a basketball hoop, and I, you know, I'm a basketball player, that is my um, sport before the injuries and before CrossFit, and when you get to 50, you don't want to be playing basketball anymore, because you're just going to break something quite easily, right? But... Going out, getting a ball, just shooting hoops, five minutes, ten minutes, just shooting hoops. Honestly, I get so much from that tiny amount of downtime. You know, I've got this big problem and I go, well, how am I going to solve that? And I go shoot some hoops. Uh, and the basketball, for whatever reason, is a metaphor for what's going on in my life. Sometimes I'm going to miss those shots. Sometimes I'm going to go straight in. Sometimes the ball's going to roll down the um, down the garage in, into the into the basement. Like, that's just life. It represents everything that's going on in my life. And the more you focus on it, the better you get. And so it's a really good metaphor. And sometimes you are going to miss, but these these ideas are going to bubble up from the surface. So whatever that is for you, for me, it's just going out and shooting basketball for five minutes uh, a session. And sometimes I might do that three or four times a day, believe it or not, uh, because it's just... Brings everything right down, stress levels right down, moves me into a place where I can think um, of, um, um, like, expand my level of thinking. Because the level of thinking um, that solves a problem has to be greater than the level of thinking that created the problem. And so that's one of the things that allows me to go and do that. So right there, my friends, are four really good ways of having a better control of your mindset. Let me know what you think and we'll catch up with you on the next one. My name's Dan Latto. Have a great week and we'll speak to you soon. Take care.